yeah, no, I'm doing great. How are you? Do good. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you joining me. Now, let me ask you first. Do you prefer going by Stickman or Stick? Trevor? Uh, How would you like me to address you? Stick. Yeah, Stick's fine. Stick, yeah. yeah. I was looking at some of your quotes, and I just noticed everything was, you know, here's a quote, <laughs> yeah. Stick. So I'm like, all yeah. right, I'll just call him Stick, you know? Well, yeah. Well, I also, I'm an old hockey player, too. So, you know, the hockey players are never creative with nicknames. So they just kind of abbreviate the last name. So Stick works probably for me, my brother, cousins, grandfather, I'm sure. But uh, I'll take the current role of Stick. Okay, now you are from Canada as well. Is it possible yeah. to be from Canada and not play hockey? I don't think that's – that's like sacrilege, right? Right. It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of musicians, actually, uh, up in Canada that I've interviewed over the years, and they all play hockey. It's oh, like yeah. when they're not making music, they're playing hockey. Right. Yeah. It's a – you know what? It's a, Two things you can do in our climate is – we, we usually make good artists and musicians because you got all that time in, indoors in the winter or hockey players. We, we create lousy surfers. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting mix. That is an interesting mix. But, uh, oh, man, I can't wait to get into this and uh, talk everything about yeah. your uh, exhibit that's going to be launching this month and uh, just the amazing artwork that you do. So, everybody, we are here with Trevor Stickman Stickle. We'll just refer to him as Stick for the duration of this conversation. Okay. But uh, he's got an amazing art exhibit coming up. He's a world-class painter, paints rock stars, portraits, everything in, like, you know, the pop culture, celebrities. But uh, focus on the rock and roll because he's got rock and roll in his soul and, you know, flowing through his veins. But uh, Against the Wall, the new works... Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. So how long has this been in the making? Uh, the, this, this, I would say tour or, um, th this embarking on this tour, um, or this section of works probably would have been around, uh, November of last year. So, okay. uh, prior to that, we kind of, we had a shift in, in direction. You know, I, I've been, uh, prof uh, professional artist for probably 12 years, which has mean I've been published, um, 11, 12 years. Um, we had a direction change about November, um, kind of left my uh, previous management. Uh, super, super good guys um, and, and still friends with them today. Just was, was kind of going in a different direction. So uh, use that as a, as a jumping off point to kind of change the direction of the art a tiny bit. Although I don't know if any, everybody would catch that direction change. Maybe it's a little too granular, but it's there. Um, but also a directional change on how we're approaching the market a little bit. So, okay. um, yeah, so that, that launched in November, but when every time an artist has to launch something, um, it, it's a little bit like creating an album. It, it takes a long time to get the, the songs in place or the works in place. So we're finally in a place now where we've got a collection big enough to kind of hit the road. Yes, you is, do. Yes, you do. I yeah. want to talk about that collection yeah. too. And you, and you definitely got the right yeah. publicist with you. That is for sure. But um, so now, yeah, yeah, she's, she's a, she's you're the painter, <laughs> you know, you're the painter. So yeah. you get to call your artwork, whatever you want. You get to name it. Like if you discovered an asteroid or a comet, you right, know, right. The, the new shit, the new <laughs> shit. All right. But everybody, I'm telling you right now, th this stuff, and we got the links down here. So in the description, we're going to have links to all sticks work. Okay. So make sure you go out, check these links out. And uh, so you can see everything that he's got going on with the new shit. But, I mean, I love the boots that you did for all the guys from Kiss. So you got, you know, Paul Stanley and, he, and Ace Fraley and you got Gene Simmons. And I want to touch on Gene Simmons here in a little bit, too. But, uh, I mean, you got them all in there. And then I thought it was so cool what you did with the statue of David. And then, you, yeah. you know, playing off of David, David Bowie, you got the Ziggy Stardust action going on. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. I mean, just the whole collection that you've got now. This is and this is all part of uh, Against the Wall. Yes, all of these. Yeah. Um, pins, so uh, okay. Against the Wall will 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 focus on the new shit. Um, the new shit. Maybe trickle a few of the the other stuff in there. Um, okay. You know, it, it, it's like I said, it's a bit of a different direction, and and these works were kind of geared towards a certain type of audience or gallery, however you want to put it. So they they fit better with the tour that we're we're putting together. Um, but some of the old works we'll, we'll sprinkle in there as well. Um, but yeah, 
but yeah, the, you know, you, you mentioned the Kiss Boots. That was kind of the starting point of this. That was the first one that I embarked on on this. Um, yeah. So oh man, was, that was uh, so cool. Yeah, it kind of came full circle because Kiss is kind of the reason I got into art. Oh, um, yeah, it was. You know, I, I was born in the seventies, but I have an older brother, so that automatically makes you a little bit older, right? Because they start bringing home the, the, uh, the albums and everything that. And I, I remember as a as a kid, I must have been five or six, and uh, just staring at the Destroyer album and yeah. artwork that I just wanted to know more. I was almost pissed off that there was there was no story behind it. Like you, ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was I was looking at it almost like, well, I needed more information. Um, and that's kind of what hooked me. I remember just wanting to draw it. And I would say that, that was the earliest uh, love of art. And, and one of the reasons I probably started drawing. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's so funny. Um, Gene Simmons is probably at the very top of my bucket list of people that I have got to host on my podcast before <laughs> he's gone, before I'm gone, it'll probably outlive me, you know, and I know <laughs> that they're on their last tour, which like breaks my heart, but hey, I mean, who can play forever? But for you, you know, with what you just said, having the opportunity to meet him and then not only meet him, but have him appreciate the artwork that you've done of him. That had yeah, to be well, incredible. Talk thing. to I me did, about that. I didn't meet him. You it didn't. Was, I didn't. Uh, I would love to. It so he's appreciating art. your artwork and you're not there my with My artwork, him. my artwork has met him. So <laughs> as, a matter oh. fact, and as a matter of fact, it was, it was, it was a, it was a weird coincidence. Uh, a collector had purchased that piece, uh, a print of that piece actually, because the original actually went to someone else. Okay. Um, and I was actually at a, had an art event that night. I had my own show. So a lot of uh, my collectors knew I was at an event or a show and then that started getting posted on social media. So my phone started blowing up and everyone's like, oh my God, you know, what's it like meeting Gene? And I felt so bad. I was like, I need to make it clear. I haven't met him, but my art, my artwork has met way more people than me. <laughs> right? Oh man. But oh, stick. That, that's got to happen, man. I mean, have you at least had a conversation with him? Have you had the opportunity? No, to, I, I, no? I haven't with him. No. Um, oh. You know, living where I live. I've had a few conversations. I've got to meet some very cool people. A lot of times I'm like one degree of separation. Um, it's, 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 it's quite strange. One of, the, um, one of the things I've noticed as I've kind of progressed a little bit in this industry is whenever you watch movies and there was a lot of like your people will can talk to my people thing. Right. It is, it is a true thing. Like Allison knows more, way more people than me. You know, my, my publicist knows everybody. She's pretty connected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but you know that, that's not to say i haven't met some cool people that there are some very cool people that i've met um i've been really lucky um you know they say don't meet your heroes or whatever everybody i have met has been amazing so i've been lucky so far um that's cool that's cool well, know, that, one, of my, yeah. one of my absolute heroes like i'm a giant giant tool fan okay. and uh, i was in los angeles one time and i saw maynard and I didn't, I, I liked him so much that I didn't want to test the theory. So I didn't even nod. I just, just look from afar and, 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 you know, the person I was with is, are you going to go say, you know, like, hello or, or introduce? Cause I've done a bunch of tool pieces. Um, and I was like, no, nah, I'm leaving that one alone because I can't, I can't risk. Although I hear he's an amazing dude. I didn't just want to risk, risk going fanboy. I, <laughs> I don't know what I would do with myself if he ruined tool for me, but I, I don't think he would have from what I sounds of it. He knows some friends of mine, and apparently he's an absolute sweetheart. But um, yeah, at that time, I didn't risk it. Yeah, no, Stick, I feel you, because you know what? I actually did have that happen to me. I'm not going to call him out on the podcast. <laughs> it would not be cool. But someone that I truly idolized, you know, as a kid right. growing up, musician. And then I got to interview them, and oh, man, it it did not go well. It's all it's I'm going to say. The music after. <laughs> and, and I know, I know, you know, and I mean, like, this is someone I grew up on, you know, like, right. I'm, I'm sure it's very similar for you. But um, so, so staying in the vein of the kind of people that uh, have influenced you and inspired you and, you know, that certainly have influenced your work. Um, now, I don't know if you've done any work of this particular gentleman, but it's enough that it's in, kind of inspired you as an artist all the same. There was one particular quote 
that I had to pull from you because uh, this is a guy that we actually have had on the on the podcast here on Rock Titan. And uh, oh man, Uncle Ted. So uh, oh, I've spent yeah. my entire career in the pursuit of creating the visual equivalent of Ted Nugent's riff in Stranglehold. Oh my God, I, that that um, I, I often find it very hard to put into my words like what I'm trying to achieve or my my constant goal. And you know, I'm not one of those artists that say I've achieved it or I know I haven't yet. But I, that is my like white whale, like this search for a piece that's got that. I, I can't even exp explain that, but there's something so visceral about that stranglehold riff. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Like that's the riff in my head that if you ever dreamt about, if you were a uh, major league pitcher coming out of the bullpen, yes! or, like all those things that like, you just like, you want to walk out to that riff. And that's that's just, your walkout song. Yeah, th yeah. That is a, you know, I don't think I've created it yet, but I haven't actually done uh, a Ted yet. Um, it's something I would, uh, I would definitely look at, but yeah, that song, man, it just, it hits me different. It, it punches me in the mouth. Right on. So do you listen to rock music when you're painting? Oh, man, I, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit weird. I almost get like method on it. Um, yeah. Uh, my wife can tell. Well, she knows who I'm painting because my house is so loud. Uh, so before I get to any painting, before I do that, you, she starts to see a shift in the house of the videos I'm watching, the music I'm playing. But by the third, it takes me about a month to do a piece um, just because you've got a lot of other stuff going on. Um, sure. Um, about a couple weeks in, my wardrobe changes, everything changes because I'm so uh, absorbed by that. So if I'm painting, you know, and I was doing my Prince piece, you know, we'd be going out for dinner and I'd come downstairs and I have a scarf on and she'd be looking at me, she'd be like, you don't wear that? And I'm just like, <laughs> I've been, you know, I've been so absorbed with Prince for three weeks. I'm just like looking for a Cuban heel. Um, so it, it's. <laughs> yeah so you, you know, get into same. character i mean you like like an actor you know you 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 get into character you when you're doing this yeah. with it right yeah, yeah it really yeah it becomes it becomes my identity for the entire shift of the piece and then probably like to the finishing touches i'll say the last few hours or like the last you know week or whatever she'll see a change right and all of a sudden the music changes and then i'll come out and i'll be like we'll be going out it'll be like a leather jacket again and she'll be like so who are we painting like she can tell by my shift that i've moved on so it's it, it's kind of weird that way the way that works right on right now there's a question you, you talk about pieces and the amount of time you spent on them so i want to get back to that but again everybody we're here with trevor stickman stickle all right and he's got uh his exhibition kicking off this month north american exhibition and uh it's against the wall the new works and uh the new shit and mm -hmm. i'm telling you everybody again go check out the description of this video uh, check out the links that we have as you're watching this, and uh, you got to see Stick's work. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, and in terms of the amount of effort that goes into some of these pieces, Stick, what's the longest? I'm curious. What's the longest period of time the you've longest? ever spent on one piece? Um, let, let, there's two ways to answer this. Uh, Self-inflicted, probably a couple months, but that's just – uh redoing and redoing but just straight ahead i would say i've done two pieces in the um in the new collection and new shit uh there are two skulls there's a silver skull and a black skull yes uh, and those um it, it's something that i kind of i i was quoted one time of doing work that is uh simple yet complex and, and i really like that so you know they look like comp uh, very simple pieces from afar Right, it's very uh, simple backgrounds, but as you get very close, you can tell they're very they're very detailed. There's a lot of realism in it, which is my background is 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 in realism. I would say that those ones, just based on the size, they're they're a little bit larger than they usually do. Uh, the amount of detail in those skulls, um, I would say that hours wise, without messing up, it'd be those two. Yeah, they're incredible. It's and it's amazing. I I I have such respect. For painters like yourself, I mean, I I can't imagine having that kind of skill. Like what you do, I, 
it looks like a picture. My wife's a photographer. So I would swear that, you know, she took a photograph of a skull like that. Like the, the yeah. way you bring it to life, like truly to life, the, the reflection and the shine and just the, the lighting effect, if you will. And I'm sure I'm butchering that whole terminology <laughs> within the painting world, but no, you no, know, no. obviously know what I'm saying. Um, it literally looks like you took a picture of it. Oh, I mean, well, it's just, it's incredible. Does any of that, is is that all the paint or is any of that partly the brush? Is is there a difference in the kind of canvas that you use? Does any of that play a part? No, it, it's just, um, yeah. one of the things that I don't do is I don't do any photo manip, which sometimes when you do realism, right. some people can do. Uh, mine is just basically a, a white canvas, a pencil, and then acrylic paint. That's all it is. So, yeah, no, no, no real tricks. All right, all right. Now, sure. of all the work that you've ever done, you know, because obviously you've you've sold your work to some pretty high profile people. Um, you know, not just in the music world, but you know, celebrities at large, and you know, just people that I'm sure do very well. Because it's not like you're uh, selling your paintings at Walmart. You know, it, it, you know, this yeah. isn't some wall filler, you know, this is been, fine art. Unfortunate. <laughs> this is fine art that we're talking about here. Um, but uh, so, like, is there anyone in particular that you'd be able to name that, you know, bought a piece of your work and you were just like, oh, my God, like, and it kind of blew your mind? Um, Almost like going fanboy at a concert if you got to meet your idol, you know? Um. I don't know um, if I know anybody. I, I've been, some people have reached out. Um, the, a lot of people don't like um, too many pictures of themselves. Okay. They like other people. Um, I, I do know that, um, and I don't know if they were for him. I, I knew that, um, you know, I, I saw some just footage, just that uh, DJ Ashba had some of mine in his office. Oh, right uh, on. Right on. Yeah. Um, you know, I did two DJ Ashba pieces. Um, you know, I, I really don't know of, of anything, to be honest with you, of anybody that's kind of removed from it. You know, a, a lot of people go from the galleries and stuff. And so I'm a little bit removed. I got you. Well, so, uh, so I guess that kind of answers one of the other questions I, I I had for you. Like, has anyone ever contracted you to do a work for them, like on, on a personal level? You know, and do you even ever entertain anything like that? Or is this something that has to be yeah. straight from the mind of stick? You know, like you don't yeah. take any requests. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a little bit of both. So I do commissions, um, okay. but the commissions. I, I'm very strict on them that you have to be really removed. So what I found is I've used to do commissions in the past and no offense to everybody else's ideas or anything like that. So when you try to crowbar someone else's idea onto your canvas, it just doesn't work for me. And it might work for some artists. It doesn't work for me. Um, so the, the rule is for me, and I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I get to say no now, or, you know, when you're young and hungry, you don't get to say no as often. Um, it's, I, we could have a basic premise, but you really are far removed. It's basically, I want Lemmy and I want it horizontal. <laughs> that's, that's as much input as you get. Or right I want, I want Maynard and I want it vertical. Other than that, you don't, you don't get to, I, I won't paint it to match your coach. <laughs> right on. R right on. So kind of along that vein, one thing I'm curious about, Stick, has there ever been a painting that you've done where when you were done with it, you're like, I'm never selling this. Like, have you ever done anything oh, that you just yeah. had to keep for yourself? Oh, no, I, I never keep anything for myself. When I say that I'm never selling this is because of uh, crippling self doubt. Um, <laughs> so uh, generally by the time I'm done with a painting, I'm done with a painting. Okay. I don't, I don't own a lot of my work. I have two pieces. That's it. Um, I've got, a, I've got like my, my references I just used. I have a, a Lemmy and a Maynard. Um, I don't have a lot of my pieces. My parents have some old ones that I've done. And every time I go in there, I cringe. Uh, I fall out of love pretty quickly. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, I'm my own worst critic. Um, 
you know, a typical not, artist. You're a typical artist, music. man. Just like yeah. musicians, everyone <laughs> hates their own work, you know, right? and they are their own worst critic. I love that. I love you said that. Yeah, it, it's very much like that. You know, I, you know, uh, like I said, in Nirvana, I hated playing Team Spirit. So I'm kind of the same way. So. All right. Well, I, I know you got to get going, but the, the, there is one other thing that I kind of want to talk about that I think is really, really cool about you, other than the fact that you're an amazing artist. And again, <laughs> everybody, we are here with Trevor Stickman Stickle. And uh, again, you got to check out his work. It's incredible. But you've got a really cool logo, man. You've got like your own logo. You got your own branding, like apart yeah. from your artwork, you got your own <laughs> brand. And uh, I was checking out... Uh, some of your videos, you know, I guess of other exhibits that you had and people are there getting inked, you know, yeah. with like your logo and stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, not and crazy, but trippy. that's wild. I mean, you don't know. It, yeah, it, it was trippy. It was, um, uh, it, it, it happened organically. It was nothing that we planned. Um, you know, we came across that logo. I had a web designer hundred years ago and he had a variation of it. And I said, you know, I didn't, you know, the, the most part of it, which is kind of weird for me because I'm an artist, is I didn't really create it. He was kind of just doing some web design and he kind of threw something similar to that. And I said, you know, contractually, I want to buy this from you because it hit me like it hit other people. So then just altered a little bit, put the devil horns on it, just make it a little bit more me and stuff. But um, yeah, it really took off uh, to a point where um, people just, you know, want T-shirts of it and hats and, and all sorts of stuff, which is which is kind of cool. It's, it's almost, um, you know, a, a, an aside. Um, it, it's been really good for branding and, and, you know, we hide it or I hide it in sometimes in plain sight, but in all paintings will have that, right. It, it's hidden in there. Uh, kind of like the playboy bunny. When you're, you're a kid, you, you know, uh, you, you remember you used to hide the playboy bunny in there. So it started with that. Sometimes, like I said, it's a little bit more on the nose, but, um, yeah, we kind of hide that in there as well. That's um, so cool. So yeah, and it's it, it's kind of cool when when people started getting uh, I nicknamed him Diablo, but uh, when I started seeing the tattoos show up, yeah, Diablo, uh, yeah, uh, um, it was very cool. Um, that, that is first wild. the same thing. I was like, are you guys crazy? But um, now there's enough people out there, and it's it's um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's an honor. Like every time someone gets it, I just I'm incredibly honored. It's that's a fan base, dude. You know, yeah. I mean, that is some serious passion. Now I couldn't help but notice that you've got quite a bit of ink on yourself. So do yeah. you have, did yeah. you do all the design work for the ink that you have on your no, I let I, I let artists be artists. You know, I don't like too much direction okay. when, when, when I'm painting. So a lot of these stuff, um, when I was younger, some of them I designed, but a lot of them now I'll go on a, I'll go to the artist and say, Hey, you, this is my idea, but you, you know, you do your thing. Um, yeah, I, I give them that freedom that I would like. So, um, yeah. I respect you know, that. The I album, respect I, um, that. yeah, my uh, in April, I think it was uh, my uh, my my seventy seven year old father got the stickman tattooed on him. So, oh, that's so pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it was his second tattoo. He got his first one, I think, in his early seventies when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl, uh, or it might have been late sixties. So he's late to the game, so he has to do some work to catch up on me, but. Uh, well, I feel really good now, Stick, because I have no ink on me at all, you know, and it's like, <laughs> and, time. I, and I'm working in a rock and roll world, you know, where most everybody's got ink on them. Yes. So uh, you can take the Trent good. Reznor, you can take the Trent, Trent Reznor uh, point of view, which is, it's like wearing a t-shirt that you can never take off. I think it was what he was quoted. So you can go that route. That's a fair point. That's a fair <laughs> point. All right. So you've, you, your body itself is a canvas. You work yeah. on a canvas, you know, for a living as a professional. And um, so is there anything potentially in the future that has yet to be a canvas of stick? Is there something else that you may end up like? And I guess where I'm going with this is like a, uh, you know, painting on buildings or anything like that, you know? You know like what? Uh, church. The, 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 there is the muralists are it's a different art. Um, okay. and they're, they're great at it. Um, I don't know if I have enough interest. Well, okay. two things. Number one, I don't have enough interest to learn it. Um, maybe three. Second is there are already a lot of great ones out there. So let them do their thing. Sure. And three, I'm terrified of heights. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the best unless, one. That's the best reason right there. Unless we're painting parking barriers, I'm kind of out of the game. <laughs> oh man. 
Oh man, that's wild. That's wild. <laughs> all right. So North American exhibit um, against the wall. All right. That's where yeah. everyone's going to be able to check out these masterful creations by stick. Yeah. And, I think we're uh, starting in Toronto. Um, okay. And then we, we've got a bunch of U.S. dates that are just falling into place. Um, right. Some U.S. cities. Um, I believe Tampa, Los Angeles, Vegas. There's some more. Um, I don't think the actual dates are in there, but they're kind of falling in place every day. Um, you know, Allison sends me some new information. So but we're starting with Toronto. That one's solid. And um, yeah, we'll, that's kind of the kickoff point. And uh, yeah. then we'll get stateside. All right. Now, are you active on social media? Like, you know, Absolutely. do you engage yeah. with your fan base? Everyone can go uh, out, yeah. check out, see what you got going on. You bet. So that's um, the best place for them to go. Ever, so uh, no negative comments. Uh, I'm just kidding. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So on uh, uh, Facebook, uh, official Stickman Art, uh, Stickman Fine Art, uh, and Instagram, uh, Stickman Fine Art. Um, you you got to remember the fine. Um, unfortunately, Stickman and Stickman Art, obviously, were gone forever. So it, when people just try to search Stickman Art, you're going to get a lot of Stickman. Um, so if, if I could have trademarked that, you know, there's a lot of soccer moms in the world that owe me a lot of money, but I didn't. So, oh man, you'd be yeah. more fun in there. You'd be more set than you are now. But we'll have links to all of that, all your social media. I just wanted to make sure that you know yeah. this was something that you yeah. actually, you know, were uh, oh yeah, a, a yeah. solid participant in before we just go yeah. blasting it out there. So, all oh right. absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, Stick, again, thank you for joining me on Rock Titan. And everybody, if you've enjoyed this conversation as much as I have, show us a little bit of love. You know, subscribe, give us a little like, share this, please. You know, get it out there in front of everybody. And and one of the biggest reasons why you want to get this out there is because everybody's got to get to know Stick and his work. And, you know, so now you're going to be able to go out, check out our links. And you've met the man himself. You've met the man. And once you see the <laughs> artwork... Um, you are going to want to invest in things other than gold and silver like you see on TV commercials all day long. You're going to want to go out and get a Stickman original. So, uh, thank you awesome. again, sir. It's been a blast talking I to you. I appreciate you, man. Thanks yeah, for having me. Absolutely. All right, awesome. Scotty J, we're out. <laughs> Bye.